Hello everybody and welcome to episode 6 of Designers Learning jQuery. Today we're going to learn how to build a simple accordion. And I have a sample here of what we'll be building. And this is what it looks like. We're using the most populous cities in the world as our example content. And I have the five most populous cities. And if I click on one of those, I have a little animation that'll show some information about that city. And I have included some images. Now this content area could include any kind of content we want, including videos, images, headings, lists, anything we'd like to display in there. For each of these, I'm just displaying a simple paragraph of text and an image with a caption. And I am, uh, once again, pulling the images and the text off of Wikipedia. So handy source of content for demos. Let's dive into the code and get started setting this up. So the first thing that we'll want to do is to make sure that we have our character set set to UTF-8. And this is because we have a lot of special characters in the code that we're pasting in from Wikipedia. And those characters aren't going to display correctly unless our browser knows which character set we're using. Now inside the body of our document, we're just going to add our header tag. Okay, and then we have to add the markup that makes up our accordion. Now there are several different ways that you could mark up the accordion, and my preferred method is to use a definition list, which is the DL tag. And then inside the definition list, we put a series of titles and definitions. So DT would be a title, and that's where I type in the name of the city that I'm dealing with. And then DD would be, this is where I would put the information about China. And inside of this DD tag, I can include uh, any kind of markup I want. So this could be a paragraph. Uh, and I could include headings, I can include lists, I can include images, video, diagrams, whatever I might like to include about this particular city. Now I'm going to paste in um, a bunch of content from Wikipedia. And now you can see that we have all kinds of content in our document. And let's step through just really quickly what the structure of this content is. I have a definition list with a class of accordion, which will make it easy to grab the list for styling with CSS or for coding it with jQuery. Then I have a definition title, which includes the name of the city. And if you go down further, you can see I've got another definition title for each city. And then I have the definition. And that um, includes a figure tag from HTML5 with the image and caption. And Wikipedia does ask that you properly attribute the use of their images. So I'm using the markup that they have provided. Uh, and then I've just grabbed the first paragraph or so of text about that city from the Wikipedia entry. And that's the same markup for every city. So let's jump over to the browser and take a look at what that looks like. So you can see we have our heading at the top. We have our definition titles. And the definition by default is indented a little bit so that the definition titles sort of hang out into the margin. And then we can additionally see that in this particular browser at least, the figure tag is indented even further. Now of course all of this is completely stylable with CSS, so let's take a look at how we can make this look a little bit more like an accordion. So we'll jump back over to our styles.css. And the first thing that we'll do is limit the width of all of the content. And we'll do that with the body. So we'll just set a margin of 1M and auto to center that on the page and a max width of about 75%. Now what I also wanna do is go ahead and put that in a sans serif font. Okay, and refresh the page in the browser and we'll get a feel for the effect that that had. The next thing that I want to do is I want to remove all of those default paddings and margins around our definition list and around the um, figure tag that's inside. So I'm going to select the definition list, which I give a class of accordion. I'm going to select all the definition titles inside of it. I'm going to select all the definitions inside of it. 
and I'm going to go ahead and select the figures also. And all I'm going to do is just set margin and padding both to zero. So if I refresh that in the browser now, everything is a little bit normalized. I haven't normalized font size, but that's fine. I'm fine with, with the heading being larger at the top like it is now. Now the next thing I want to do is write some styles for the definition titles. So I can do that here. And what I'm going to do is add a background color of deep sky blue, a border bottom of Dodger blue, and I'm going to add a border radius to the top two corners. So this would be the top left corner, the top right corner, the bottom right corner, and the bottom left corner. So basically stop starting at the top left corner and going around the box in a clockwise manner. And next I'll just make the text white. Whoops. We'll bump up the font size just a little bit. Add a tiny bit of top margin and we'll add some padding. And now let's go take a look at what that looks like. So that's looking pretty promising. We have some nice headers for each of our sections. Now let's go ahead and style the definitions. So we're going to wrap a border around all four sides of the definition and then remove it from the top of the box. We'll set basically the opposite border radius that we set on the uh, titles so that those are rounded corners on the bottom two corners and square at the top. We'll add a little bit of padding so that there's separation between the content and the border. So let's refresh that in a browser. And this is what our site will look like for users who don't have JavaScript enabled. So this is perfectly acceptable. They'll never know that they're missing out on an interactive accordion element. Now I am going to just quickly drop in some more styles to style this content inside the definition, but you are free to style that however you like. It will not affect the accordion. So this is what our page looks like with the content styled according to my preferences. You are of course free to style this however you would like. But next let's take a look at how we can make this interactive and collapse all that content and show it on demand. So we're going to jump into scripts.js and I'm going to select the accordion. And we're going to end up working with that accordion over and over again. So just as we've talked about before, I'm going to cache that in a variable. Then the first thing I want to do is find all the definitions and hide them. So now our accordion is collapsed. Now it doesn't do anything when we click on it. And that's something that we'll be adding in just a minute. So the next thing I want to do is find all the definition titles. And when the user clicks them, that's when I want something to happen. So I'm going to say unclick and then add in a function. Okay, now what do we want to happen when these get clicked? We want to start from the thing that was just clicked. So we can do that by using the dollar sign this selector. And I want to go to the next node in the DOM. If you remember our last lesson in traversing the DOM, we'll say next. And we just want to double check and make sure that what we're getting is a definition by passing in a selector. And we'll go ahead and say slide down. So let's jump over to our document and take a look at what this looks like. So I click Shanghai, China, that slides down. Now I click it again, nothing happens because I've only said to open it. I can click the other items and open them, but I have no way of closing things. So it's not really acting like an accordion at this point. So let's take a look at what we can do to change that. The first thing that we can do is instead of using slide down, we can actually use slide toggle. 
And what slide toggle will do is it'll alternate between using slide up and slide down each time something is clicked on. So come over here and we click it once, it opens, click it again and it closes. Now the next thing that I would like to do is if I open one panel of the accordion and then click to open another, I'd like to go ahead and close that panel that's open. And here's how we can do that. So we're starting here, we're getting the next definition and we're sliding it either up or down depending on if it's opened or closed right now. Now we can use those DOM traversal methods that we learned last time to find all of the siblings that are definition lists that are visible. So this is going to find any of the definition lists that happen to be open right now. And we'll go ahead and say slide up, which means to close them. So slide down means to show and slide up means to hide. So now let's come over here and refresh this in a browser. I open one, I click another to open it, and it didn't quite work for us. So let's take a look at what went wrong. Oh, I didn't save the file. Okay, so now let's take a look at what happens. I open one, I click on another, and that one closes. So now things are looking pretty good. So now let's touch this up a little bit by adding some new CSS styles. And the first thing that I want to do is if JavaScript is enabled, I want to go ahead and put four rounded corners on our definition list. And I'm also going to want to make some other changes to the styles. But how can I make uh, an easy change to styles so that they apply only if JavaScript is enabled? Well, I'm going to teach you a handy little trick. Go into your HTML file and to the body, add a class of JS off. Then jump back over into scripts.js and the very first line, you want to select the body tag, remove the class of JS off, and add a class of JS on. Any styles that we write that we prefix with the JS off class will only apply to the page in the event that JavaScript is off were not available, and any CSS styles that we write that we prefix with a class of JS on will only apply if JavaScript is working. So that gives us the ability to completely restyle the page based upon whether or not JavaScript is enabled. So let's jump back over into style.css and write some styles for our list for the case where JavaScript is on. Here's where I have styled the titles in the definition list. So I'm just going to start working right there. So JSON and then the same selector. And I want to go ahead and set the border radius to all four corners, which I can do by just specifying one value there. And then I also want to change the cursor to pointer to kind of show the site visitors or the users that this is an interactive element. So refresh the page. And now they look more like big buttons and our cursor indicates that we're over some kind of element that you can click on and interact with. The next thing I want to add is an indicator that will show when the items are collapsed or open. So I'll start with that JSON class because I don't want to add that if my user doesn't have JavaScript enabled and we'll say before and I want to go ahead and add some content. Uh, the plus sign to show that it can be opened and I'll just add a little bit of a, a right margin on that so that it's not right up against the text. So we refresh now we can see that we have a plus sign which shows that those can be interacted with. Now the next thing I'd like to do is actually make some changes to the appearance of the open section. I'd like to change it to orange. So how we can do that is by adding an open class to the items when they're clicked on. So once I click Shanghai, for example, I would add a class of open and change the color to orange. Now you might be thinking, why wouldn't I just add the color change in the JavaScript? And the reason is 
JavaScript's job is behavior, and you will make your life so much easier if you keep styles in your style sheets and behavior in your JavaScript sheet, and don't use the jQuery CSS um, method to change things like color. What you want to use jQuery for instead is to toggle different classes on your items, and then style those classes in CSS so that you don't have tons of CSS styles mixed up in your JavaScript code. So let's hop back over to scripts.js and when we click on the definition title we want to add a class. So we could save this and we can add it right in here. A class of open. And Now let's jump back over into styles.css and go to where we are styling the definition titles and we'll write accordion definition class with open. Now I don't need to actually put the JS on class uh, in front of this, although it wouldn't hurt anything if I did. And the reason that I don't have to is because this open class is only ever going to be added to these elements with JavaScript. So I already know if these definition titles have a class of open, then JavaScript's enabled on the page. I already know that. And what I'll do is make the background dark orange, and I'll change that border bottom color to chocolate which is kind of an orangey brown shade. And I'm going to adjust that border radius back um, so that just the top two corners are rounded. Let's go ahead and save this and take a look. You can see now that this changes to orange, this bottom border changes to, to uh, chocolate, which I said um, is an orangey brown kind of color. And here's our content. So what happens when we click on another item? Well, our accordion still works, but our classes aren't getting removed. So let's go ahead and jump back into the JavaScript and get that fixed. We're actually using slide toggle to decide if we should open or close the list item. And here we should do the same thing with the class. So we can actually, instead of adding a class, we can say toggle class. And if I refresh that in the browser, when I click on it and click it again, you'll see that the class is removed from it and it returns to its blue style. Now we do still have one case that's not being taken care of, which is if I have one section of the accordion open and I click another, this class isn't getting removed because it's only getting removed when this item is clicked. So see now this item is backwards. So we are starting off with one item where you're either adding or removing a class of open, then we're moving to the next node in the DOM, which is the definition. We're either sliding that up or down. Then we're finding all the siblings to find whichever definition is visible, and we're sliding it up. Now we know that if we have to slide up the definition, the definition title that came right before that definition needs to have the open class removed. So let's go ahead and add a prev and make sure we're getting a definition title and then say remove class open. Now if we jump over here and refresh the page, you'll see that it's working exactly as expected. So if I click on Karachi and then click on Lagos, you'll see that the class is removed from Karachi because I'm looking for whichever definition list is open, sliding it closed, then moving up to its title and removing the class. So now if I click on Beijing, it's going to remove the open class from Lagos and slide up the content for Lagos. So exactly what we want to happen. Now let's just take a quick minute and make a couple of optimizations. The first optimization is that after I click on one of these items, it would be nice if this little character here changed to show that this could now be collapsed again. So let's jump over. That's actually a job for CSS. And here we have accordion DT before and DT open. So we can actually say if it's open, we want to change that character. So accordion DT open before 
in this case, if I just put a hyphen in there, it's going to be way too small. Hyphens are really teeny. So I actually want to use an end dash, which if we were writing it in HTML, it would look like this. But when you write it in CSS, it actually needs to use a different character code altogether. And there are websites online where you can look those up and I'll link to one in the show notes. But the end dash is 2013 and we just include the slash in front of it to escape it. So now let's go over here and refresh the page in the browser. We click on this and you can see the end dash is a lot wider than just the hyphen was and it's much closer in width to the plus sign. So that there's a lot less of the content moving around. And if you wanted to, you could adjust the margin on the minus sign. So adjust the margin here. Here it's 0 0.5. So we might want to try like margin right of 0. Let's try 0.7. So that looks like it's just about perfect. So we don't have that shift happening in the text anymore. Another thing that I'd like to clean up is once this is open, it would be better if this border here around the definition was also orange to match the title. And that's easy enough. So I'll go to where I have styled the DD. And we'll just use our handy JS on class because if JavaScript is enabled, we'll only see those definitions when they're opened in the accordion. So it's perfectly fine to just use that to style those and we'll just set the border color to chocolate. So now this looks a lot more cohesive. It looks like it actually belongs to that section. Now there's just one more thing that I'd like to take care of and that is this color change. So when I click on, for example, Beijing, the color changes immediately, even though this animation takes 300 milliseconds to complete. So you do have control over how long animations take in jQuery, but by default they're 300 milliseconds. So it might be better if this color change was also animated to 300 seconds so that the color change and the opening of the panel happened at the same time. And that's actually really easy to add with CSS3. So we'll go back to where we styled just the raw definition title and we'll add transition to it. For um, And what will transition is all and we'll transition in 300 milliseconds. So instead of all, I could say background. So you just list the CSS property that you want to animate. But actually in this case, we're animating the background and we're animating the border radius. The border radius on the two lower corners is animating from zero to seven. And we can animate that as well pretty easily by just saying all so that all things about the definition titles will animate when they change. So let's refresh this and take a look. So now we have a color change that animates with the opening and closing of the panels. And I think that that adds a nice little touch to it. And we also have the changing character over here. And we have a pretty nice little accordion. And let's pop back over and just quickly review our JavaScript. The first line here, we're using a handy little trick to keep track with our CSS if JavaScript is available or not and write styles just for each case. In the next line, we're just caching our selector because we're going to be using the accordion more than once. You can see I used it here and here and that will help to save a little bit of time. I'm looking inside the accordion to find all the definitions and hide them. And then I'm looking inside the accordion to find all the definition titles and add a click event handler. I start with the thing that was just clicked, which we call this dollar sign this. I toggle the class of open so that I can style that open class however I would like in CSS. And then I step to the next element in the DOM, which would be the definition slide it up or down depending on whether it's open or closed right now. Search among all the siblings of the definition for the definition that's currently visible. Slide that up so that it gets hidden away. Move back to the previous element which is the title of that section that was visible and remove the class of open. So we have nine lines of code here but we have got a few blanks 
and technically this chunk right here is all one line. So just a couple lines of code to create the accordion. And you can see that most of the work of creating that was in the CSS and getting that style the way that we wanted it to look. And that is how to create a simple accordion with jQuery. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video and would like to learn more about jQuery, pick up a copy of my book, jQuery for Designers, available now.